So then the question is, why do we care about partitioning variability? And there's basically two big things. Um, one is it's going to help us find R squared, which is the coefficient of determination. And the other is it's going to help us with inference about our model. So let's start with that coefficient of determination piece. So there's this thing um, R squared, which we call the coefficient of determination. Um, and it is the percent of variability in the data explained by the model. And we've got an equation for it. R squared is going to be equal to the SSM over the SST, or it could be 1 minus the SSE over the SST. So I have uh, the regression output for the uh, serial model where we're trying to predict the number of calories in a serial based on the amount of sugar in that serial. And the thing that I'd like to point out here is the multiple R squared value right here, uh, which is 0 0.2656. Um, and then I've also made an ANOVA table. So I've run the function ANOVA on the model uh, that, I, that I had created um, for, for my linear model. And this is gonna give me an analysis of variance table. And the analysis of variance table is convenient because it gives us a bunch of things. It gives us the sums of squares in particular. So um, we have this column, which is labeled sums of squares. The top thing here, this is the SSM, the sum of squares for the models. And the one on the bottom is the SSE. So if I know that the SST is equal to the SSM plus the SSE, then I could figure out what my SST is here. So I've got my SSM, that was 4,567.2. I've got my SSE, which is the 12,626.2. And then if I add those things up, it should be 17,193.4. That's my SST. And then I could use that to compute my R squared value. So we know that R squared, uh, we could compute by the SSM over the SST. And in this case, that would be the 4,567.2 out of 17,193.4. And that should come out to be 0 0.265-ish. So, uh, so that is one thing that I might ask you to do on an exam. I might give you an ANOVA table and ask you to tell me what percent of variability in the data is explained by the model. And you could figure out what the SST is from the ANOVA table and then tell me um, what percent of the variability is explained. So in this case, 26.56% of the variability in the number of calories is explained by this model using sugar as a predictor. Maybe I'll write that out. Um, so what we could say 26.5% of the variability in calories can be explained by the model using sugar as a predictor. So just a couple more things here. So we call that R squared value the multiple R squared value, and that's the SSM over the SST, or one minus the SSE over the SST. But there's also something called the adjusted R squared, which we'll come back to once we're doing multiple regression. Um, it's a little bit more complicated. So it's gonna be one minus SSE divided by n minus p minus 1 over sst divided by n minus 1, where n is the number of observations and p is the number of predictors. So we like uh, multiple r squared because it has a nice explanation or interpretation. Uh, and we like the adjusted R squared because it's good for comparing models. 
but it doesn't have that same nice interpretation. So if I was gonna ask you on an exam what percent of the variability is explained, you'd wanna look at the multiple R squared value, or you'd wanna compute it using this simpler form formula. But if I ask you compare these two models and which one is better, then you'd wanna use the adjusted R squared. And R squared is um, between zero and one. Uh, you want a higher R squared because that means you're explaining more of the variability. Um, the question is like, what's a good value for R squared? And it's highly context specific. So uh, in the hard sciences, sometimes we want like a R squared of 0.8, explaining 80% of the variability. Uh, but I still think like 0.6, 60% of the variability, that sounds pretty good. In the social sciences where things are harder to predict, maybe a 0.2, is gonna turn out to be good. And there are places where even explaining a tiny bit of the variability would be really good, like predicting earthquakes. If you could predict you know, 4% of the variability in earthquakes, that's probably a pretty good R squared. You might remember from an intro stat course uh, that there is something called little r, uh, which is the correlation. And you could find the correlation between two variables. And for simple linear regression, uh, you could square little r, and that would become big R squared, the coefficient of determination. So if I do correlation squared, that's the coefficient of determination. But that only works for simple linear regression. It does not work for multiple linear regression because you can't do the correlation between more than two variables. So that's one thing that we'd want our partition our partitioned variability for is saying something about R squared, what percent of the variability in our data is explained by our model. The other piece has to do with inference. So again, if we're thinking about um, variability in, in data, uh, here's my calories and sugar um, example. And if I was thinking about the total variability, which I think I did in blue last time, I could look at the difference between each data point and the mean. And I could uh, do all those differences, square them, add them up, and that would be my SST. And then one of the things that I'm asking when I do inference on my model is, is it any better to use the, uh, the model with the slope? So I think I was doing this with green before. So then the question is, is our model with the slope any better uh, than just the mean? And the way that we're gonna assess that is by looking at the amount of variability that the model explains. So here I've put in another variable um, on my x-axis, and that's my, uh, my sugar content. Um, and now I've got a, a line that's gonna do different predictions. For each point. And again, I could think about the difference between the point and the model. I think I was using green for this before. So I've got my, my residuals, um, but they're not all going to be going to the same value anymore. They're going to be going to the appropriate value on the model line. And what we want to know is, is that better? Are we explaining more variability than with just the flat line? Uh, we're always explaining a little bit more variability. That's just how it works. But um, when we do inference, we're asking, is that um, amount of variability, is it significantly different than zero? Is it statistically significant? So again, we could look at our um, model table and our ANOVA table. There's another thing that comes in our ANOVA table, which is the mean square. Um, and we could have a mean square for the model. And that's going to be the sum of squares for the model divided by the degrees of freedom for the model. And then we'll have the mean squared error or mean squared. Uh, and that would be the SSE over the degrees of freedom for the error. And in this case, our model just has one predictor. So the degrees of freedom for the model is going to be one. And then our SSE, our error, has n minus two degrees of freedom.
So here we've got our MSM is equal to 4567.2. That's 4567.2 divided by 1. And then we've got our mean squared error, which is 371. And that's the 12,626.2 divided by 34. So we had 36 data points in this uh, data set. And so 36 minus 2 is 34. And if we're going to do a, an overall test about our model and whether it's better than the mean, um, we're going to use a test statistic that's an F value. And F is going to be MSM divided by MSE. And so if I plug in those numbers, 4567.2 divided by 371.4, I think my F comes out to be 12.3-ish. And then we need to think about, um, is that a large F value? Is it you know, statistically significant. Um, and you can always use uh, the normal distribution. That's a kind of a, a rule of thumb or way of scoping things in your mind. So I know that two standard deviations off the mean in the normal distribution is pretty significant. Three standard devi deviations off the mean, that's very significant. Now an F distribution is not that much like a normal distribution, at least until N gets really, really big. Uh, but it does eventually converge to the normal distribution. So my guess, looking at that F value, is that 12.3 is going to be significant. I would need to go look at an F distribution with 1 and 34 degrees of freedom to decide what my p-value was. And uh, the F distribution is this skewed distribution like that. We'd go out and look for 12.3, and then we'd see what is the area that's as extreme or more extreme, and that would be our p-value. Um, I'm not going to ask you to do that very much. I think I do it in the lab this week if you want to see how you can do it in R, but basically uh, it's going to come out in the table here. So my p-value was 0.001296. That's pretty significant. So I'm going to see that in the ANOVA table, and then I also see it in the last line in the regression table. That's my, um, my, my test statistic for the overall model. So we've talked about the test statistic for a coefficient in a model. We've talked about the p-values up here, but there's also a test statistic for the overall model and a p-value for the overall model. And that's basically asking, is this model better than using just the mean? And it basically always is. Uh, usually adding a little bit of a slope is going to explain more of the variability than uh, just using the mean.